Welcome back to Squarely on the Level. My name is Darren Kellerman, working in conjunction with the Grand Lodge of Kansas. This is the second of a special two-upload episode this week. The first portion, if you haven't watched it, is an interview with 45-year employee of Grand Lodge, Brother Chuck Hoffmeister. 90 years of age, and I have asked him to give us what I believe is his last tour of the Grand Lodge of Kansas building before he leaves. And this is a great day for me. I enjoyed spending several hours with Chuck at the Grand Lodge of Kansas building, just talking and reminiscing about a lot of stuff. And he's got so many secrets. I can't wait to sit down with him again. But join me as we take this uh, look at the Grand Lodge of Kansas. to have you join us. Um, this is the beautiful entrance where we've got the square and the compass and Grand Master of Kansas right now. And um, a few years ago, we repainted a lot of the areas to kind of spruce it up. And at one time, these pillars were all the same color of the wall and the contractor was doing it, I asked him if he could take and make them look like marble. And so that looks like marble, and they did a beautiful job. It is just not marble. It kind of matches the bases around the trim of it. This is Grandmaster's office when he's in time. He has a place to go and get some quiet and do some work. And uh, he's up here the first Grand Masters and Secretaries. They used to lie, but they come in and said that we had to take the courts down because they were deteriorated, so we don't light them anymore. But um, over here is some beautiful pictures. This is custodian. This is the council administration room where the, uh, they meet and take care of business when they get together. Um, of course, that's lady room. But um, you get out in the center of this, and it's like a naval chamber. You can stand here and talk normal, and it reverberates. It's because of the dome ceiling. Now you'll have to excuse the mess because uh, we are packing and trying to get ready to move. And uh, this is a library and a museum together. Starting up in that far corner is the first grandmaster. And then these are all the past Grand Masters that have served Grand Lodge of Kansas. And we just about run out of space. Uh, all, this, all was redone. And that up there is all hand done. Um, back when the building was first built. <laughs> and so, and here's some of the past grand secretaries. So that, um, and this is uh, pictures of the, there's a Masonic home when that had a fire in December of uh, 1919. Really, what I'm looking for is the building. Here's the original pictures of the building that was first built. 
in the office space. And uh, this built, this is what was here before it was raised and this building built in 1916. So we can, back there is the two levels of uh, library books and uh, Masons are, and public can come in and pick one to read it, but they can't take it out. <laughs> so we can go upstairs. So how many stairs are in that staircase? I've forgotten. <laughs> I used to know because I got tired of running up and down. This is where York Wright at one time had offices. And uh, many, let's see, York Wright used to be in that corner and then um, they moved over here and the, the Smart Foundation was in that area. Um, and then they moved and so now the Eastern Star, Grand Chapter of Eastern Star is in that area. Uh, this is a Guild Daughters display. Uh, we uh, they use this for their museum, and we'll get by there and here. We were busily packing. Howdy. <laughs> This is the Demolay display area. Just, um, and then Rainbow for Girls is here. And back there is this uh, storage room for Eastern Star stuff. Uh, that, um, I, we used to put that square and compass up at that archway in the winter time because there was a lot of cold air came through here. And uh, when the elevators, I was afraid of the elevator, and when it was condemned, I just put it there and closed off the door so nobody could get in, fall down the shaft. And, uh, This is the, what was the bedroom for, uh, for uh, Bob Arnold. And uh, now this is, I think, the pride and joy. It should be anyway, of all nations. We had a, a little water problem. The water backed up and uh, bled through the radiators and flooded this room. And uh, it warped the boards. So Bob, uh, right where Bob Fitzy, decided, well, let's just take that bad part out and put it like a Masonic Lodge room. And so these are marble tiles that are in here. So. And um, most wonderful Chester Gilbert had 
these chandeliers put in when he was grandmaster. And these are just all pins and so forth that's been collected over the years um, from different people. Um, This is the uh, conference room for Grand Factor of Eastern Star. Uh, and that's their tree of love for people making donations. They put their name on that. And here is the antique elevator. It still works. Passed inspection yesterday. <laughs> This elevator, we've got the, it was put in at about the same time the building was built. It's getting hard to find parts for. This is what we call the pump room. Got a lot of the equipment, a lot of equipment, and so forth in it. it and uh, and this was one time the print shop. And um, we um, when the last I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, hmm. When he passed away or retired, why they, we didn't have anybody to finish with the pump or with the printing. So then they changed over and doing a lot of it now by just the printer upstairs. And you'll have to excuse this area because we have things being packed and so forth. There are our annual reports over the years that we finally got packed up and where they wait and get big boxes. This is our vault. Where all this stuff once one, believe it or not, it was all in here. Wow. And uh, so and uh here's Dean Lottie's uh, these are furniture from the lodges that have either consolidated or closed, unfortunately. And uh, all this is storage from like 51 and 17, and some of it's um, Boceon. These shells are put in. At one, at one time this all looked like this down. You couldn't get through anywhere down here and so we put manufactured that, uh, some old rails that we took out to some of the offices where it used to be and put shells in. And this is our boiler room. That boiler is about 20 years old. It's still running real good. Come on. This is my second office. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Bitty, bitty. I don't know what this room is for, but it's been here. Kind of, these are the stairs that go up to the back.
At one time, these shelves were all full, and as we're moving, we're either disposing of what is no longer needed or uh, to packing it one way or the other. But, uh, it, uh, it, material and books and so forth that we use for operation as well as selling. Uh, there's some of the articles that sell. We got some stuff here that is um, Pretty important. The, um, we, we also have all the, some of the past masters' pins and so forth that they. This is the errant handler for the three offices upstairs. This is what we're putting in temporary for now, the stuff that we've packed. And one of the differences is there in the floor, that's where they cut the floor out and put in the drain tile for outside. This is the mechanical room for the elevator. And my understanding there is only one other one that is similar but a lot larger, of course, and that's over at the state house. So the man the um I'm trying to think some of the major things that uh, we've changed that and it just doesn't come to my mind right now. 61? <laughs> 51 was a flood. 67, I think it was, when that tornado started out, mm -hmm. Burnett's Mountain went through. Why, well, uh, it damaged some of the Capitol building. And some of the other buildings only broke a few windows out of here. It never moved it one bit. Well, apparently things were wrong with the state house, not at the Grand Lodge, Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is really built. It, there is concrete and steel from basement clear up to the roof. Then there's, of course, wood rafters, big ones. But this big building was built to withstand tornadoes and uh, bad weather, and it it's done pretty good. Say so. The floors are about uh, that far apart, and it's concrete, corrugated tin, steel wire, concrete, and then the wood floor.
You would like to see the inside of the Grand Master's office and the conference room. I'll uh, see if I got the right key here. This is where he gets some peace and quiet when he comes in. People don't bother him. Now, I've heard a story, Chuck, about when Grandmaster Halloran took office. This wasn't necessarily here, and you had to hang some, do some redecorating. How on earth do you put stuff in here, including that giant golden eagle there? Very carefully. <laughs> I had to look for a long time to find just the right plaque that we could put those cross swords on. He wanted to cross swords over the doorway and I said, uh, we visited about it and decided that that was not the best place to put it because of people coming and going. And uh, so we put it up there and no, I, that eagle was over in the um, museum and uh, he wanted it here so we moved it here. Do you know the story behind that eagle, how it came to be at the Grand Lodge of Kansas? No, I don't. I'm sorry. I, no, nobody seems to have just appeared here. I don't. It, uh, I know that you have to be very careful with it because it's uh, very old. Here is a um, conference room. And these pictures all around in here and out in the vestibule are very old and uh, they're all hand oil painted on canvas. Well, thank you. Well, thank you for that, Chuck. That was wonderful. Yeah. At one time, the lady's restroom had a bathtub in it. A bathtub? <laughs> yeah. It was, it was uh, the blueprint showed a bathtub. Somebody along the line dropped that and put in just a normal bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so that may go back to why it was been told that there was somebody living here. Because it had that bath scheduled, but I don't know about it. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I uh, was driving back from uh, one of them out south of Topeka, and he was sleeping in the back seat laying down and uh, his, Lou, his wife, was with me and I forgot about the railroad tracks that was, used to be out there and I thought of them all of a sudden I slowed down real quick and he went <laughs> off the back seat <laughs> and he was a good joker. <laughs> he didn't mind. <laughs> oh my goodness, nobody gets to throw the grand mash on the floor except for you. <laughs> How many years has it been again? <laughs> 45. 45. So, looking back, um, how has your time with the Grand Lodge of Kansas as an employer been? Beautiful. Been a wonderful experience. Everybody's been great. Work with me. And most wonderful, Tracy. Uh, when I was having my problems a few years ago, my wife passed away and I um, was having some problems issuing with it. He was patient with me and didn't demand I be here all the time. If I didn't feel like it, I could take some time off and so to him I owe a great lot. The Grand Lodge of Kansas, uh, I would guess close to a million Masons have come through since you've served us. And We've all been appreciative and this building has been a gem and that is a direct result of the hard work you've put in for us, Chuck, and we all thank you for that. Thank you very much. It's been an honor and I appreciate that. So, Chuck Hoffmeister been at the Grand Lodge for 45 years. I don't know that we've got anything around here that's been here 45 years except for maybe 
the card index. <laughs> Which, uh, but Chuck, man, what an amazing job for a, an amazing number of years. Every time I've went into the Grand Lodge building, it's always been clean, neat, arranged tidily, and he even got my picture up in a timely fashion. So, Chuck, I, I know I talked to you yesterday on the phone, but man, congratulations on a stellar career at the Grand Lodge. And we all quarter wish you the best going forward and hope you have many years where you just enjoy life. Thank you.